Hello, Carrie Barbosa with Mac Training here. And today I want to talk to you about making an image map using hyperlinks. So I decided to create a presentation uh, with a featured author as if I were running a bookstore and I wanted to create some buzz about this featured author of the week or month. So I decided that I wanted to make some hyperlinks. Normally we think of hyperlinks as being linked out to text and hyperlinks have been around in PowerPoint for a very long time. So if I wanted to create that hyperlink to another part in my presentation, I would highlight the text, I would hit insert and I would go to link. I can link out to an existing file or web page. I can link to a place in this document, which is what I'm going to do. I can create a new document or I can have someone be able to email all great features. So I'm going to link that out. I decided to use Maya Angelou just because I liked the image that I'm going to show you uh, momentarily here. And I wanted to link this to I Know Why a Cage Bird Sings. It will give you the preview of the slide and I hit OK. The problem with that is, well, first of all, there's a lot of text on this slide, so it's not very interesting. Secondly, um, it changes the text, the color, and it also underlines it. When I put it in slideshow mode and click on it, the link certainly does work, but take a look at what happens. Now the text changes in color. So not an ideal way to make your presentation more interesting. Here's a better way. Here, and let me hide this slide real quick. I'm going to right click on it. Any slides that you don't want to appear in your presentation, you can hide them. They are still there, but when you're in presentation mode, it will not show up. You can tell because it's grayed out and it has a little slash mark over top of the two there. All right. So what I've done here, normally in a slide show, you're presenting. Here's slide the first slide. Talk about the thing. The next slide, talk about the thing and so on. It's a linear presentation. Nothing wrong with that, but let's spice it up a little and make it a little bit more interesting by using an image map. So what I've done with this group of pictures, well, it is a photo that I found on online pictures. So I went to insert and online pictures. This is a great feature. It has pre-sorted categories or you can search for anything that you would like. And it gives you a Creative Commons only box, but you're still re responsible for checking out and making sure that it truly is copyright free and you're able to use it in your presentations for the use that you're thinking of. You can filter the items by the size of the picture, whether you want a photograph, whether you want it to be square or wide or tall, maybe you want it only in black and white, um, in other instances, you might want clip art or other items. So if you wanted to insert that, you would just select the picture and you would hit insert and would go into your presentation. I've already done that, but I want to show you here is what it looks like. When you are presenting, you could go ahead and click on the images. It goes to the particular part of your presentation that you want. You don't have to go in any particular order. I also added a back button here so I can get back to that same slide and I could just keep clicking away. So for this sample presentation, I just grabbed some information about the book and I found a video to go along with it. So I thought this would be a great thing to show at a kiosk, at a bookstore or at a library to get people to check out the books or buy the books. And they wouldn't um, necessarily have to go in order because maybe they already read some of the books. So I, they wanna just start with, uh, the heart of a woman because they've read some of the others and they can get the information there and then go back. I'll show you how to put it in kiosk mode so that would make more sense because right now when I click it goes in order as a normal slideshow. So let me go back. All right so let me show you how I created that image map. So basically what I did is I made shapes over top of those books and I'll show you how I did that. So I just copied the presentation one more time um, oh, actually, let me delete that link because I didn't delete it from my first one. There we go. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. That's good enough. All right, so I want to make a shape like I showed you right here over top of the book. So let me start with a song flung up to heaven. I'm going to go to on my home tab. I can use the drawing tools here and grab them from the drawing group or I can go to draw 
or I'm sorry, I can go to insert and I can go to shape and I can choose it from here. In this case, it is a rectangle for this book. So I'm going to grab it here and I'm going to insert that rectangle. Make that a little larger so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, it doesn't quite fit the rectangle because it's a little bit skewed. So I'm going to make sure I have my shape selected. I'm gonna go to my shape format or my drawing tools, depending on what it says on your version. And I can click, click on edit shape. I can change the shape if I want to, or in this case, I want to edit the points. So now you have a red line around the outline of the shape and you have these black squares on the corners and you can just click and hold and drag them and place them where you want. So that was easy peasy. All right, now I want to make this into a hyperlink. So I can go to insert. I can go to the link button. If it's grayed out, that means you didn't select your shape first. Go to the link button, it gives you this dialog box. So as I said, you can link it to other places in this document and that's what I want to do as well. And let's find the correct slide. There we go. Number 19, a song flung up to heaven gives you that preview and I click OK. I don't want this ugly blue shape to be in the presentation. So I'm going to go over to shape format again and I'm going to select shape fill and I'm going to put no fill. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm hiding it. I don't want that ugly outline just in case I didn't do a very good job. Plus it makes it kind of cumbersome, bulky. All right. And I hit no outline. All right. So now I want to do one more. Let's this time. Okay. I'm from the home tab. I'm going to select free form shape this time. Yes, it's still a rectangle, but there's some items on uh, edges on there that are covered over. So I'll start here. I'm going to click and I want to click each time I want a point to happen. And there we go. We can see that little blue line again. Doesn't matter if it's perfect because we are going to hide the shape anyways by getting rid of the fill. Once you've come back to the beginning, it will cr close the shape and then create that shape. All right. So this one, was the heart of a woman. <laughs> Forgot which one it was for momentarily. All right, I wanna do a link again. Now I can go to that insert tab and I can go to link. I could also right click and select link, but most of the time what I use is the keyboard shortcut, control K. Control K for hyper link with the K. All right, so I wanna put it in somewhere in this document. And it's Heart of the Woman, so I want to select the second one and hit OK. I'm going to go to Shape Format again, select No Fill, select No Outline, and now I have two of my links. And of course, as I showed you, you would do that for every single place in the document that you want, or on the slide rather, that you wanted to create that shape for a hyperlink. Let me show you how it works. All right, so try it out. You always want to try it out, make sure it works, Heart of the Woman. And I had to go back because I didn't uh, do that back button just yet. And a song flung up to heaven. All right, so now let's go ahead and insert the back button. All right, so let's make that a little bit smaller. In this case, I'm going to use an icon. So I'm going to insert and I'm going to click on icon in the illustrations group. Icons are great, they're pre-made. They will allow you to change the shape, the color. And the great thing about icons is that when you enlarge them, when you make them larger, it doesn't get pixelated at like old clip art used to. So I can choose whatever thing that I want, a home, or in this case, I'll just do arrow. And I'm going to select the arrow because I want it to be a back button. Can, there's some other ones that would work nicely as well, but that one will be perfect. I'm going to there's that design ideas. I use that to help me create this, but I don't need that right now. So I'm going to X out of there. I'm going to drag it to where I want it to be. It doesn't look great with a black on gray background because I can't see it. So I'm going to make that a white fill. I want to make this linked back to slide number 11. So I'm going to do that control K and find slide 11 and click OK. Now I'm going to copy it. So I did control C. 
I could do a right click and I could hit copy. I could use the clipboard options on the home, pay, home tab, but I already did control C. I wanna stick it in each slide. There's my design ideas, I'll close those out. You can actually stop that from happening, but that's again, another topic for another video. I want to change that again to white. I could have easily um, pasted special, but in this case, it was just as easy. I'm gonna control copy, control C for copy once again, because I wanna place it in the same spot on the next slide. So now this will help with consistency because I'm putting it on the same spot. Control V is the shortcut that I'm using to paste these. I could have used the paste options on the clipboard or I could have done the right click and use those options as well. But Control V is super quick. Notice also when, I'm so, when I have copied these, it has, when you hover over, it has the featured author there. So let me do control K. Notice how it automatically copied the link as well. So I didn't have to make the link on every single slide. All right. So let me go ahead and demo that real quick. So I want to go there. I only made the two links so far. Heart of a woman back. The song plug up to heaven back that is as easy as that. Let me go ahead and show you kiosk mode. So I wanted to do this one that I fully fleshed out. Um, as I said, when you go into slideshow mode, normally you can click anywhere and it goes to the next slide. I wouldn't want my customer to have to figure that out or accidentally get out of the slideshow. So I'm gonna go to slideshow tab. I'm going to go to set up slideshow and this will give you some options. So presented by a speaker, full screen, that is typically how you have that set up. Um, I want to browse from a kiosk. And in this case, I only want them to be able to see slides three through 10. So I can go from three through 10. And then I can click OK. And now once I go into slideshow mode, if it's not a link, it's not gonna let them click on it. So this could be again on a computer or a touch screen monitor where it would allow your customer to look for more information about each of these titles. And again, the great thing is they don't have to go in order. They can click on any one. They can watch the video. They can read the, the script, the uh, description rather, and only the ones that interest them but not being able to get out of the slideshow because it's in kiosk mode. All right, so I am Carrie from Knack Training. Come back and visit us for more tips, tricks, and ideas to help make your presentations better.